Adapt RC 2010 Productivity Accelerated Adapt is very excited to present to you a presentation of the expanded modeling, design, and productivity enhancing features of Adapt RC 2010. See for yourself how this new release will accelerate your reinforced concrete designs. Adapt RC is recognized worldwide for quick and easy analysis, design, and the investigation of reinforced concrete systems. The program can complete modeling and design of a variety of systems including simple and continuous beams, beam frames, one-way slabs, two-way slabs, two-way flat plates, skip joists, two-way joists, and also waffle slabs. The program can also model multiple beam cross-sections including T, I, L, and rectangular sections. It can model drop panels, drop caps, and transverse beams along with steps above and below the slab. Two versions are offered to meet your project size and budget. These include RC 2010 Plus and RC 2010 Standard. Multiple design codes have been included in ADAPT RC 2010, including new codes such as the ACI 31808, Canadian 2004, Indian 2005, Hong Kong 2007, and the Chinese 2002 codes. The program is now compatible with 32 and 64-bit operating systems, including Windows XP, Vista, and Windows 7. Several features and improvements have been made to the program, including a new 3D graphical display, geometry input revisions, base reinforcement input, improvements to one-way shear design, the inclusion of allowable crack width input and design, a new customizable tabular and graphical reporting system has been included. Improvements made to the investigation input. Improvements made to the crack deflection algorithm and many others. The purpose of this video tutorial is to show an example using Adapt RC version 2010 and highlighting the features added to the program. From the options tab we're going to select the system of units as American and the design code will be American ACI 318 version 2008. We'll start a new project by clicking on New Project. And in the first screen we'll notice that a new window will appear. This is the structural view. This is a 3D graphical display that's been added to ADAPT RC 2010. Under the d general settings we're going to go ahead and add a general title. Once the title's been added, we can go ahead and select our structural system. So in this particular version, we're going to select two-way slab using conventional geometry input, and we're also going to include uh, drop panels, so we'll select yes and then next. The criteria under design code is selected as American ACI 31808. This was uh, the selection we made in the previous screen. Notice that the other codes are grayed out if you select SI units or MKS the other codes become active. We'll select next. Under the design settings we're going to leave the default values as they are. We're going to reduce moments at the face of support. We're not going to redistribute moments and we are going to use the equivalent frame method for the two-way slab design. Under the design options tab we are going to use all provisions of the code including the minimum read bar for serviceability. There's also an option at the very bottom which says contribution to unbalanced moments. We have this set to 100% for top isolated bars and also 100% for bottom isolated bars. This is in reference to the base reinforcement that will be shown later in the example. We'll select next and now we get into the span geometry. For this example we're going to use three spans and the length of each span will be 30 feet. The width of the span is going to be 280 inches and notice if I select or input the value in the typical row and press enter each of the different rows or columns below is filled. The height of the slab we're going to use is 10 inches and finally the reference height we'll use is 10 inches. We'll leave the multipliers left and right as they're set to 0 0.5 and notice now in the structural view we have the slab shown in this view and the spans. We'll go ahead and select next and now we'll input the drop panel geometry. 
Select next one more time and here we have drop panel. So the height of the drop panel we're using will be 20 inches. And to either side of the drop panel, we're going to have a drop panel that's going to be 60 inches wide. So the total width in both directions will be 120 inches. If we review the plan view of the structure, we'll select this op option to show the plan view. We can see that the drop panels have been added. We can also see that if we zoom in on the elevation view as well. For this example, we're going to use lower columns only. The columns will be 10 feet in height and the dimension of the column is going to be 22 inches by 22 inches. You can also input a diameter column, a circular column, and you can make columns rectangular uh, with any given dimension under the B column or the D column. For the left edge and the right edge, this is input used for the punching shear check. This tells the program that in the direction transverse to the span direction the condition for punching shear. So if we leave this to exterior the program will check the dimension between the center line and the edge of slab top or the edge of slab bottom and if that is less than four times the slab thickness the program will consider it an edge or an end condition. If we select interior and we'll change these to interior the program assumes that it's an interior frame line and so it uses all four sides as part of the critical section for the punching shear check. We'll go ahead now and select next. Under the supports and boundary conditions we're going to leave the top and the bottom of each column fixed so we'll leave these set as they are. And for the reduction for face of moments we want to use the actual width of support. We'll select uh, support width here and those are automatically filled in. If you want to override those with some other value you can deselect this option and now you can type in a specific value. In the loads tab we're going to select two loads. Uh, the first load we're going to do is a superimposed dead load so under the span we're going to type all and when we do this each of the spans will be filled in with the with the same load. So for the superimposed dead load this will be a uniform load and we're going to use 20 PSF for the uniform load for the live load, we're going to use 50 PSF. Again, it's a uniform load. And we are going to skip the live load with a skip factor of 0 0.75. And we will include self-weight in the analysis. If you do choose to turn off self-weight, we'll select no. And we'll notice under the class that self-weight is actually added as a load class if you choose to have the program not calculated automatically. At this point, the structural view is, is filled out, so here we can see, again, we have the, the slab, the drop panels, the columns, the fixity at the base of the columns, and also the loading. The program in this current version allows you to control some of the functionality within the structural view. So to do this, if we go to select viewable items, a new window will appear which says 3D display settings. We can display colors for the spans, the background, the span segments, boundary conditions, and so on. We can also choose to view grid lines, visible here, and we can choose to view or not view different loads and moments in the graphical view. Within the graphical structure view, we can also turn on different shading options. So here we can show a wireframe of the structure. We can show a wire shame with some transparent shading. This is the solid model and then the solid model with outlines. If you want to use quick tools or quick icons to deselect different options, we can do that as well. Here we can show or hide supports. We can show or hide the slab. We can also show or hide grid lines, loading, rebar. This hasn't been added yet, so this is inactive at this point, and also supports. We can also scale the view using the scale factors in this window. Under the material concrete input window, we're going to select the material strength to be 5000 and we need to press enter for the modulus of elasticity to change 
and be updated. We're going to use an ultimate creep coefficient of 2 and we'll also change the column strength to 5000. In the reinforcement material properties we'll use 60 KSI steel with a modulus of 29,000 KSI. Preferred bar sizes for the slab we'll use are 6 so we'll change this to a number 6 bar. For the column strip allocation, the percentage you put here is a function of the required area, not the moment at either a negative location or a positive location. So this allocation of rebar will be assigned to the column strip and the remainder would be assigned to a middle strip. That's shown in the output of the, of the program. In the shear reinforcement section, we're going to use headed studs. We'll change this to a 3 and 3 eighths inch diameter stud using a yield strength of 60 KSI and two rails per side. If we choose to select base reinforcement, we can open this by selecting yes under the option for base reinforcement and we can input the reinforcement using the type. So here we're going to use an isolated bar. Notice that the first end location is span 1 and the x1 over L ratio is 0 so this rebar will start at the far left support the second end location is span 3 and the x2 over L is 1 so this rebar will be continuous from the left support over to the right support. The bar size we'll use is a number 6 bar so we'll select 6. There will be 10 bars in the bottom of the slab and notice that the top or bottom location can be selected here so we'll select bottom with 2 inches of cover. If we review the structural view at this point, the rebar does become active. So we're going to go to a wireframe view and we can see that the rebar is shown. So if we do turn off the display of the rebar, that hides the rebar as was previously shown um, inactive. We'll go ahead and highlight that rebar, go back to our main elevation view and continue with the input. The cover we'll use to the top and bottom bars is one and a half inches and this is to the face of bar not the center of gravity of steel so we'll go ahead and select yes. The development length we'll use for strength will be 12 inches. This is not code specified uh, or code calculated this is an input by the user so wherever reinforcement is no longer required the program will uh, add this extension onto that location of rebar. If you want to increase this to some code development length you can increase manually by overriding the default values. The load combinations we're going to use are based on the code that was selected so we'll use 1.2 times the dead load plus 1.6 times the live load. We also have our strength reduction factor shown for design. This program also gives the ability to include lateral loads in the analysis. If we select lateral load and set values we can include lateral moments which are applied to either side of a joint and we can also include two lateral load combinations with the option to reverse the sign for these combinations. In this example we'll go ahead and deselect lateral load inclusion and we're going to save the file, we'll say OK and now we'll save the file using the file menu, save. If we review the location where the file was saved, we can see that a .adb file is created and a folder is created with the same name. The folder will contain all of the intermediate files generated after the analysis has been completed. We'll go ahead and say cancel and we'll run the execution of this particular model. Once the execution has been successfully completed, a window will appear showing the different definitions for each of the icons shown here. The first icon is the report icon which takes you to the report setup or report generator. Here you have a customizable format where you can create any given report shown here. If we want to create a report cover along with a compact report, if we expand that we can include any of these options in the report. So assuming we want to show the calculated section properties, we can go ahead and create the new report. We can name this, select Save, and a new report will open in Microsoft Word. The report here shows a report cover with the title, a graphical view of the elevation, 
and also the selected reports, in this case the calculated section properties. The program can also generate graphical reports using the report generator. Here we'll select graphical reports, create new report, save this as graphical, and a new Word document will be shown including graphical reports for all of the load combinations. These include deflection, moment and shear, and also reinforcing, shown here. In the report generator you can update company information to be included as a footer at the bottom of each page. You can also select customized reports and save those as default type reports. The program also allows you to view results using graphical views. If we select the graphical view, we have three different graphical views. One is deflection. You can assign this for any different load case or the service envelope. Note that the creep is not included in this view for service envelope. You can select shear again for any load case or for the service and strength envelopes and also bending moment. The third option in reviewing results is to select RC sum from the far right tab. When we select this a new window will appear showing a legend defining each of the icons. We can also select any of the load combinations or the envelope. We'll select the envelope for this case and here we can export any of the graphs that are generated out of RC sum. We can show shear diagrams, moment diagrams, and also rebar diagrams for a given load case or for the envelope. We can also view a summary sheet shown here which includes top rebar, bottom rebar and its disposition along the length of each span, the required versus the provided reinforcing both in graphical view and in decimal format, and also a summary of the punching shear check. We can also choose to include different spans. So here we, we select span 1 only. We can only select two spans. And then finally, if we select 0, this is the first span. For this example, I've saved the model using the SI system of units and also the European code. And this is to highlight one of the more important features in ADAPT RC 2010. So we're going to go back to the user input and we're going to select material reinforcing and in the codes EC2, British code, Hong Kong and Indian codes you're going to have the option to select a crack width for crack width control. The allowable crack width can be entered here and the program will determine and calculate the actual crack widths in comparison to this value. If those are exceeded the program will add reinforcing that will be included in the service reinforcement in the output. Returning now to the main model with ACI and American units selected, the last thing we'll show is the investigative mode. So once the analysis has been completed for the new design, we can opt to select the investigative mode, which allows you to enter user-defined reinforcement for the de determination of moment capacity versus demand moment, or you can use the program calculated reinforcement and moments to determine the same. So under options, investigative mode, there are three selections. One is to investigate the capacity for steel provided. The second is to investigate the capacity and compare this with moments generated from the design loading. And the third is to investigate the capacity and compare with some design moment either from design loading or user defined moments. We're going to go ahead and select option three. And if we select data, it says that the input data has not been executed yet, so we'll want to go ahead and deselect that. We want to generate the analysis first so that that input data can be generated. And now if we go back to the options investigative mode, select data, we have a new table and window that appears. The first window is the X over L ratio for each span. Here we have three spans based on the system that we've input. And we also have an X dimension along each span. We also show the area of still the top, the CGS top, the bottom area of still, and also the bottom CGS. So we can generate the reinforcement to fill these tables with using 
the required rebar from the analysis or the provided rebar from the analysis or we can manually input rebar and cover. For this example we'll just say that we're going to use the, re the provided reinforcing so now the table is filled out with the provided reinforcement that was just calculated in the main analysis of the program. We want to compare the moment capacity generated with these values with the moments that were generated again in the analysis. And here we have the maximum and the minimum moments. So we're going to select moment envelope to generate that table. And now we'll select OK. And finally we can run the investigative mode. So we're going to go ahead and execute the investigation. And that's been completed. If we want to review results for the investigation, we're going to go back to the report setup. And under tabular reports detailed, we can select investigation mode. We'll create that report. And again, a Word document will appear showing moment capacities at demand and demand moments along with capacity ratios. At the very bottom it will also show us the rebar that was used in the investigation and its location and distance along each span. This will conclude the video tutorial for the new ADAPT RC 2010.